Good morning. It is 7.29 a.m. on Friday, April 1st, 2022. I'm Christiana Ellis, and I just got up. This is five more minutes, and I had half a mind throughout that whole intro to say something obviously false and then say, April Fool's. You know, it's interesting because... I remember as a kid thinking April Fool's was fun, but I feel like there's been, the internet kind of spoiled it in some respects, because I feel like there's been a cultural shift where for a while, the internet just felt like the Wild West in terms of April Fool's stuff where people would just make up all sorts of nonsense and put it out as true, and then you had to just, like, you would be horrified or delighted or whatever it was by the story and then you say oh right april fools mm. and then i feel like with most of the people i interact with april fools has almost started to become a day like that you dread not that you look forward to because it's fun and silly but like that's the day that everyone pulls out their stupid stuff and tries to trick everybody which yeah I mean, it is. I don't know. It's interesting. It just reminds me of how growing up, practical jokes and pranks feels like the height of comedy in some respects. Um, and yet you don't really do them very much. Not really. Because... A lot of practical jokes actually require some level of reality remove in order to not just be mean. Like a lot of, you know, when you see a movie or something that features elaborate practical jokes, you know, we find those funny, but then if you imagine actually doing it in real life, it starts feeling kind of really like mean, mean. Now, that's not to say they never happen. I mean, obviously, you know, I think it's something where um, that can be the relationship dynamic between people, just kind of like people who like to uh, bust each other's chops and that sort of thing with uh, friends and all that. But uh, I, it, I've, it's all, something I've always been a little bit wary of just because it's one of those things where as much as it can seem appealing to have that be sort of a form of intimacy that is, you know, mutually shared and appreciated. But it's so easy for it to not really be. For it to be something that one of the people involved doesn't actually enjoy and really kind of only just puts up with and is not appreciated and that sort of thing. And it's, you know, how do you avoid that? Well, it is not saying mean things or playing practical jokes on your friends. But that's not to say that these things have no place in society. It's more just a matter of like, if you are considering playing a practical joke on something, someone you care about, give it some real consideration first and don't just let it become a 17-year-old uh, lack of impulse control sort of deal, right? You know? considers like is this something that's going to cause damage injury uh hurt feelings hmm. or is just perhaps surprise i don't know i don't know maybe part of what it is is that you know the mindset that i'm in right now is that i've just discovered a show that i've heard people talk about before and recommend and finally the the volume of recommendations um, was capped off by uh, Mark Kilfoyle and his Wandering Out Loud podcast that he does every day like this. Um, uh, he mentioned it, and that made me finally check it out. It's all on HBO Max, and it's a very unusual show, but I love it. And it's this guy who, <laughs> he doesn't look that old. He looks like maybe in his 30s or maybe early 40s, but he kind of acts like an old man uh, just in terms of the way he moves around and talks. But uh, at the same, like, you know, he's not like wearing old age makeup or anything. He's just 
Uh, he just kind of moves kind of like an old man. You, you watch him, you'll see. But the show is called Joe Para Talks With You. And the basic premise of it is we've just got this guy who's actually a comedian and this is his comic persona, although I'm not actually clear how close it is to his real persona. Probably there's some overlap, but it's heightened would be my guess. Um, <clears throat> and the show is just him talking excuse me, talking to the camera about whatever it is. But the, the, the thing about it is that it's very soothing and gentle and usually focused on the little things because um, Joe Para, the character, is not very adventurous as these things go. However... He really does find the joy in little things and can appreciate the little details and kindness and all of these sorts of things. And, you know, somewhat the same way that people talk about how Ted Lasso, like, showed the world that comedy can be nice again, that sort of thing. This is very gentle, and it's literally a show that, like, a lot of the people who love it have talked about how it became a comfort show that they'll like they'll put on as they're going to sleep because it's relaxing it's soothing it's gentle and you would be forgiven having not watched it of saying well but is that funny and the answer is yeah it is but it's a different kind of humor than say something like dumb and dumber right because it creates a character that you feel like in any other normal comedy would be an easy target for being made fun of or pranked or bullied. But that doesn't happen because the show loves him and by extension we do too. Um, so I don't know. I mean, check it out. Maybe it's not for you, but it is for me. All right. So I'll leave it there and I'll talk to you all tomorrow for five more minutes.